You were designed to create. It's part of the core of your identity. This is true of all humanity, but if you're watching this, you're probably one of those men and women who have nurtured, developed, and embraced your desire to create. Maybe you work here in Hollywood or New York or in some small creative town where you are inspired and supported. It doesn't matter where you are. Maybe you just know someone in your life whose creativity has blessed you and you want to understand them more. Wherever you are, wherever you come from, welcome. We are so glad you're here. And today, we're going to talk about the artist's heart. We've all heard how art has the power to calm a savage beast and the power to ignite a movement. It can bring you peace as you drift off to sleep, it can inspire you to go slay the dragons you face in your personal life or your work. But what does your art say about you? What is the impact of the work you create upon your fans, your patrons, your colleagues? And what is the connection between your heart and your soul and the creative projects you bring into this world? Why is it that your brokenness and your woundedness are a powerful part of your creative genius? And why is it that your raw honesty and your vulnerability about your own story can be the very thing that has the greatest impact? And did Jesus know this 2,000 years ago? Or is this a surprise to him? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Welcome, I'm Joel Pelsu, president of Arts and Entertainment Ministries. Our passion is helping you as a creative professional to succeed in your creative life while growing deeper in your spiritual walk. Because your creativity and your spirituality are designed by God to work in concert with one another. And that's our passion. If that's your passion, take a second, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and click on that bell so you get all of our notifications when we release new content. Oh, and down below, you can check out our calling course, helping you think through your calling as a creative, or we also have our Catalyst class, teaching you theology and how to be an entrepreneur as a professional creative. I encourage you to check those out. Now, Jesus knew the life of a creative. He told stories that pricked the imagination. He created parables and went straight to the heart. And he crafted proverbs with tremendous sound bites and quotable ideas that stick with you. He was a wordsmith, a storyteller, an orator, and has always been passionate about inspiring others with his creative gifts. While Jesus was here on earth, he wanted not only to inspire his audience and to express what was in his heart, he wanted to transform the very lives of his audience and to transform the entire culture. And in the end, he was willing to die to ensure that transformation. He put his whole heart into his stories and his parables. Now, just to be clear, most artists are not willing to die for their audience to understand them or in order to change their lives. And to be clear, Jesus was far more than an artist, but he was not anything less than an artist. And if we slow down for a minute, we will find truths that transform not only the way we understand our heart, but also the way we understand our art and our creativity. And the verse that came to mind as I prepared this video is Matthew 12, 34, which tells us of the relationship between our heart and our art. And I took the liberty quoting two translations, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks from the ESV and for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of NIV. If we've sealed off our heart and are living some shallow life, it will come through in your art and your art will be shallow. God wants us to live deeply passionate, thoughtful lives and the art created by Christians should reflect a robust, deeply thought, courageous creativity. But if our spiritual life is shallow, our art will be shallow. Here are three other examples to consider. And these are some of the reasons that non-Christians may not resonate with some art and media created by Christians. Just take a look at the art itself. First, if we create kitsch and sentimental art, what does that say about our heart and what is the impact on our audience? We're stuck in sentimentality. Second illustration, what if our art is preachy or dogmatic? What does that say? It says we're stuck in our head, maybe missing the greatest commandment, which is to love others, not just bang them on the head with truth, hoping it gets through. And third, what if our art is always filled with tension and angst or transgressive art we learned in art school or in MFA and cinema? Does this not betray a heart consumed with rebellion instead of a heart of love that is life-giving? You see, in each of these three cases, the art exposes the heart. The heart of the filmmaker, the designer, the artist, whatever it is. And maybe you've heard the spiritual principle that you cannot offer to others that which you do not possess. Meaning, if you've not learned to forgive others, you will have a hard time helping others to forgive or creating art that shows them what that looks like. 
you do not learn to trust God in difficult times, it's nearly impossible for you to help others to trust God in difficult times. The depth and vitality of your spiritual life determines your effectiveness in helping others to become spiritually mature. We all want to encourage one another, provoke one another to become more healthy. Now, in the same way as a creator of your artwork, and the power of the work you create is also limited by your spiritual health and vitality. Now, there are exceptions. Naturally, God can speak powerfully through weak Christians and through art that would otherwise be shallow. Why? Because God can use anything, right? God can even speak through a donkey if he wants to. That's not how God normally works through us and our art. The process he calls us to is to pursue spiritual maturity in our own life, and then we take time to express the beauty and the mystery of a deeply spiritual life through our creative projects. So if we want to imitate Jesus as the Bible calls us to, we should accept no substitutes in our own life or in our art. What does this mean for our calling as artists and creatives? It means we should never pursue a creative career while neglecting our heart and soul. A Christian is one who understands that their spiritual life impacts everything else, especially their creative life. So they're intentional about developing not only their craft, but also nurturing their heart and soul too. The artist's heart should never be neglected. It is essential to your creativity and your creative career. Jesus knew this and gave us these proverbs that bring clarity to our own hearts and creative projects. And he did this to give us insight to help us to become healthy spiritually and bold and confident in our creativity. So don't separate these two dynamics in your life. Understand how they work together and seek to glorify God in both your spiritual life and your creative life. So let me know in the comments what you think. And if you enjoyed this, take a second, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit that bell to get all the notifications. Check out our website and our online courses by clicking on the links down below, especially our online artist calling course, which is the best place to start. As always, I pray that God blesses you and equips you to be salt and light in a world that desperately needs it. Check out another one of our videos right here.